Beautiful, beautiful early summer morning. What a glorious, glorious day that the, the Lord's given us to worship Him in, His, uh, in the beauty of His holiness. Let's stand together as we call ourselves to worship and share some scripture and verses of a song together. Scripture reading this morning is from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And where I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not where thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been such a long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father. What a beautiful statement of faith uh, that was for the apostles and it, was, and it is for us today. Let's turn together to hymn number 90 and we'll sing the uh, first, uh, second, and last stanzas of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, hymn 90. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in Thee. Mortals join the mighty chorus, which the morning stars begun. Love divine is reigning o'er us, leading us with mercy's hand. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us somewhere in the triumph song of life. Thank you and be seated. Well, God, we want to thank you and praise you for giving us another opportunity to be in your house this morning. Thanking you, Lord, that you allowed us to come together and do what we, Lord, have already started doing. Reading your word, 
Lord, praising you in the song hymn and the spiritual song, knowing, Lord, that you're right here with us. And, Lord, we get to fellowship with one another, even though maybe at a distance, but, Lord, still yet in the same place, um, bringing honor and glory to you, your holy name. Thanking you, you've allowed us the opportunity to also be online, Lord, today for ones who have not yet been able to come out. And Lord, just thank you for that privilege that we have as well. May you just bless each and every one listening, Lord, and watching this morning. Thanking you that you've allowed us, Lord, the great privilege of knowing you. Knowing that what you've done for us is the greatest need that we have. And by, Lord, giving um, your life for us upon the cross of Calvary, today we have everlasting life. Thanking you for everything, Lord, that you've done for us, that you're doing right now, like ministering to us on a daily basis and providing for us each and every day. And looking forward, Lord, to that day you come back to take us home to be with you. Lord, our prayer is Maranatha, as you taught us to, be, to pray, that we would pray even come now, Lord Jesus. And we're ready for your coming, looking forward to that moment when it, it comes. But Lord, until then, I pray that you would find your church being faithful, um, doing that which you've called us to do. And Lord, we just turn this service completely over to you. We know, Lord, that there's many among us that are struggling with some health issues. And Lord, we ask you to touch each and every one of those. Lord, we pray for the ones who've lost loved ones, and we ask you just to um, give them a peace and comfort, Lord, this morning, knowing, Lord, that we trust you with absolutely everything. And, Lord, we put our faith in you today. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen. One of the great promises to us as believers is that through the office of the Holy Spirit, God reveals Jesus to us, the person of Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus will be manifested to us uh, through the Holy Spirit. And uh, once you see God, you're never the same. Uh, let's turn together to hymn 87 and sing about the beauty and the uh, uh, fair, beautiful nature of our Lord Jesus. We'll sing the first, third, and fourth stanzas of this hymn as you remain seated. Fairest Lord Jesus. Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O Thou of God and man the Son, Thee will I cherish, Thee will I honor, Thou my soul's glory. Shine fairer still the moonlight, and all the twinkling starry host. Jesus shines brighter, Jesus shines purer than all the angels heaven can boast. Beautiful Savior, Lord of the nations, Son of God and Son of Man, glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore be thine. Amen. Let's turn over now to hymn number 493. 493. And we'll stand and sing the first, second, and last stanzas of glory to his name. Beautiful song of praise and worship to our Lord and Savior. 493 as we stand together. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was 
was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Amen. Thank you and be seated. Good morning. Hope everyone's had a beautiful morning so far. Thanking God that he has allowed us another opportunity to be in his, his house. It's like before, we don't have very many announcements to make because we don't have anything going on as much as we have had in the past. But we do have, have looking forward to things that are going to be happening here pretty soon. Um, the walking track, um, if all goes well over the next uh, week or so, they're going to open up on, on June um, 15th. That's on that Monday. So um, if you would uh, like to be a part of that, just uh, let those know. I think they're going to need a few more volunteers as well. So if you'd like to help out, um, just let us know with, with that. Um, Sunday school, we're going to have a Sunday school meeting um, June 14th um, at between um, the 9 o'clock service and 11 o'clock service. We've always wondered what we should do with that one hour we have right there between. Um, but we're going to try, we're going to have a Sunday school meeting um, then. And then maybe the 21st, if we um, stay on track with everything um, that's happening, we'll, we'll try to do Sunday school back on the 21st. We're not positive. We're not, we're not guarantee that. But um, if, if we don't have any kind of uh, spikes or, or whatever they want to call these things that are, that are coming, um, we'll, be, we'll do it on the 21st. If not, we'll just postpone that until we can um, and do that um, safely. Um, so just remember those, those dates that we have um, coming up. I don't believe um, any more announcements. I don't believe we have anything else that's going on. Um, tonight we'll be back here at 6 o'clock in the evening. The youth are going to lead that service. Um, so then, but you're more than welcome to come and be a part of that. And I believe you, uh, people enjoyed it last week as, as well. So that's tonight at 6 o'clock. And then next, then Wednesday, seven, 6 o'clock, we'll be back in. We're going to probably go back to 7 o'clock after all the Sunday school starts and stuff like that. But we're going to try to keep it normal until, uh, keep it at that time until we get back to, back to normal. So I don't know of any other announcements. Um, we did do a, have a blood drive uh, Tuesday, and if you was not here Wednesday night, I'll just kind of give you an update on that. Uh, we, we broke a lot of records in Kentucky um, that week. We had uh, the most people give blood in, the, in a day and then the most new, um, um, new givers as well. So um, we appreciate all of you all coming out and, and donating um, blood. They would not take my blood. I'm unclean. Um, I've, I lived overseas more than five years at a time, so I, I'm not able to give blood. At least now I know that I'm not, not able to give blood. So there's a couple of us that are in that boat. Um, but we want to thank you for helping out with that. Our prayer list is as long as it is usually. Um, Bill Little had a surgery earlier this week, uh, last week, on, I believe it was maybe Monday, Monday. And he is home, but not doing great he's still in a little bit of pain and discomfort is that right so we want to continue to remember um, Bill um, Little and as he's recovering I want to continue to remember Linda LaForce she's recovering from surgery as well we want to continue to pray for Linda Pack uh, she has good days and, and bad days so we just want to continue to, to lift her up 
in prayer. Thelma Hardwick, we need to still pray for her as she's um, getting back up on her feet as, as well. And uh, so many others. Edsel had, uh, Edsel's about half, well, what are you? I got eight more to go. Eight more to go. So um, just continue to pray for um, those treatments um, for Edsel um, and all those other, all the other people that we know that's going through um, different treatments on a, on a weekly basis as, as well. We want to pray for our government, pray for our country, pray for our churches um, today because we are in a, in a time that we've never, ever experienced before in the history of, of all of our churches that we know of in America, and it's a difficult time. Um, I, I, I'm a preacher, and I can't apologize for that, but it is so weird to me that, that you're able to, to gather in mass gatherings, but you can't come to church I don't understand that I mean I know I'm a preacher I'm sure Jim Lester complains about people not brushing their teeth enough too so I, I can understand that um, uh, I know the doctors complain about high blood pressure so much but I guess as a preacher I gotta complain about something you know what I'm saying so that's my complaint right there um, uh, but that's that's really weird to me how that how that happens but I believe uh, with all my heart that we can stay safe and we can, we can come together and praise the Lord together as God intended us to do and yet still bring honor and glory to his holy name. And that's our goal, and that's what we're, we're doing. If I cannot do it better than Walmart and Lowe's, I'd quit. Um, and I really would. But, uh, but because we believe we can do that, I'm thankful that we have that opportunity and to praise the Lord with and, and be here. So I want to thank you for coming today. Donnie, would you come and, and ask prayer over us? And I, the reason I want to do that is that we are on, on YouTube and, and Facebook, and that's why everybody's sitting in the back part of the church because they figure that's the cutoff point of the video. Um, so you cannot be seen on, on, on church. So, um, Donnie, would you come and pray for us? Father, first off, we come in the name above all names, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And you tell us that's our phone number and our dial tone and everything. So we come in that name. And uh, like Chuck shares, there's trouble in times. And it seems like uh, it seems like the church doesn't have any rights anymore. But you tell us in your word that we need to expect that. But you also tell us that we need to persevere and be strong. So, Father, but uh, we have a host of prayer requests. Our list is very long. I think about those that are went through tests. We praise you, Lord, for the how you're helping those that are sick and recovering, going through treatments and how you're just helping and, and you just lift them up and we just praise you for that. And uh, Father, we just praise you for what you're going to do. We come expectantly because that's what you tell us to pray. Mm -hmm. But Father, we, we have a host of people. I think about my lost neighbors. I think about lost family members. We think about our communities. We think about this, our nation. And Father, I, all I can say is, Lord, just forgive our nation for uh, not honoring you, but also uh, they seem just to honor sin. But Father, you tell us to pray. You tell us to you tell us to stand in there, and you tell us to be strong. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We ask you to lift these requests up from the from there's things on our hearts to those that are in need, to those who are suffering, Lord. And as uh, our pastor breaks the brings the word of life to us we ask for the anointing of your holy spirit we ask you to touch him in a mighty way that we may leave a, a changed people stronger people we give you the glory in jesus name amen you know back in the uh back in the time of martin luther in the 1500s um, christianity had come to the point as a result of as a result of the teachings of the church it had come to the point that uh, people still had the hope of heaven but as they walked in their Christianity down here um, it had become a miserable miserable experience and one of the things that Martin Luther did uh, through his life and through his preaching and through his teaching as he started the Protestant Reformation in, in the 1500s, the early 1500s. One of the things that he did was to help people to appreciate and enjoy the beliefs that they had and the following of Jesus that they participated in while they, while they were alive. 
and it was an amazing idea. Uh, I'm reading a really great book right now uh, called about Martin Luther, and uh, I mean it it caught fire. That concept, that idea, caught fire. We take that for granted today. We take that for granted today, but. That was not always the case, has not always been the case, and it's still not the case for many, many people uh, who look to Jesus in an erroneous and difficult way. But I wanted to share with you a quote, which, which I think is just beautiful about the, the, the way that our Lord has made it possible for us to enjoy walking with him in this present time. And this is a quote from Martin Luther. This life, therefore, is not righteousness, but growth in righteousness, not health, but healing, not being, but becoming, not rest, but exercise. We are not yet what we shall be, but we are growing toward it. The process is not yet finished, but it is going on. This is not the end, but it is the road. All does not yet gleam in glory, but all is being purified. This song, and I'm going to try to sing this morning, as a joyful expression of that idea. We've got heaven to look forward to in the future, but this life today is an abundant life, and our Lord made that possible for us. <clears throat> I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful light. A beautiful place of mansions fair and skies ever bright. Where all who believe the Savior dear forever shall stay. And having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way. I'm going that way, I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to him and never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long, I'm going that way. The glorious news I tell and sing as I onward go. That those who are still astray in sin, my Savior may know. I want them to sing his praise above some beautiful day. For glory to him who died for me, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to him and never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long, I'm going that way. I know I shall meet him at the gate when trials are past. I know I shall meet him face to face in glory at last. And oh, I believe that when we meet, well done, he will say. For trusting his soul redeeming love, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to him and never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long, I'm going that way. Praise God for that privilege. Thank you, Mike. If you would turn with me um, to um, Fleeman. Uh, the last part of that, verses 17, is where we're going to start. 
I just want you to know that I do have my mask with me, and my coat is somewhere in this building. I just don't know where it's at, but I, I, I forgot it. <laughs> it's hanging somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go ahead and go without it if, I'm, if it's okay. Um, but it's, I'm thankful today that we are able to, to look, look into God's holy word. In the last couple of weeks, just to kind of give you an update of how we walked through this, this unique book, um, is that last two weeks ago we saw Paul as a friend to, to Onesimus. We, talk, we saw a friend as a, um, as a friend to Philemon. And last week we saw Paul as an intercessor, as, a, as an intercessor on behalf of Onesimus and an intercessor on behalf of, of Philemon. What that mean is he butted in. He stuck his nose in their business. He helped them out. He, he stood in the gap for them. So we see how we, we see him as a, as a friend, and we saw him as a, an intercessor, someone who, who intervenes on the behalf of someone. And now today we're going to see Paul as the partner, as one who just comes along beside of and helps, a co-laborer in, in the work, um, and the one who is able to receive. Um, what I, we've had a lot of babies born this week um, in this difficult time. Uh, we have a lot of grandparents in our, a couple of new sets of grandparents in our church this week. Um, Steve and Teresa became grandparents, and Brian and Pam had done something this week that I've never heard of ever in the history of mankind. They became, they had three grandkids born in within two days of each other. So um, they don't even know what to do. They're just like, you know, um, they're just standing there in awe, you know. Um, but one thing I was thinking with, with everybody having these babies, one thing that, that always is, amazes me is the receiving blanket. I don't know if you're amazed by the receiving blanket just as much as I am, but it's just an odd name. Because in my mind, the receiver is the man who catches the ball in the, in the wing or on, down the line or something of that nature. So, but you know, I don't think of the word receiver in that end. But the receiving blanket is unique and um, I, I know this because I've had two children of my own. And the first one that was born, uh, he's almost, uh, I don't know how old he is. <laughs> 23, 24 years old, somewhere in that nature. Um, born in 97, I believe it was. Um, but what I do know is uh, when they first, when he was born, he was born overseas. And they, um, they offered me, they said, the doctor said, you know what? You give me $100 and I'll let you be in there with me. I said, I'll give you $50, and you just act like you never said that. We'll just stay, I'll stay right here, and you stay right there. But after he was born, um, they brought him out, and they brought me into the room, and he looked like a, um, a cigar. And you say, no, that's odd to call your child a cigar. But he looked like it was a Cuban person wrapped him in a cigar. I mean, you could have smoked him. I mean, that's how tight he was, he was wrapped. And I thought that was the oddest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And I was like, you know, he has to be uncomfortable. So what I did was I unwrapped him. And the nurse came in and she looked at that baby. And you could just see going through her mind is, how did that happen? And she wrapped him right back up like a cigar. She come back about an hour later and I unwrapped him again. And she was just shaking her head thinking this kid was like, you know, uh, how's he doing this? How's he getting out of this thing? And the third time she said, you know what, it's you who's doing this. You're unwrapping this kid. And she promised me at that time, she said, if you do it again, that, this child will never walk a day in his life. He'll never be able to walk. I said, my mom didn't write, wrap me up like a cigar. And I'm walking pretty well right now. You know? And me and her argued like you would not believe like over this in there. I was just a kid. I was probably in my early 20s and, and she was an older lady and she didn't like me much at all by the time we got done with that. But in their mind, in their way, still today, they believe that that receiving blanket holds everything together. Is that the correct doctor? I don't know. I'm hoping. I don't know. And it probably makes the kid feel more comfortable because he was in a tight spot and you know, all that stuff. And now in America, we have the understanding is that we have a receiving blanket, that we receive that child and bring him into this world and into that blanket. So what I want to show you today is this, is that receiving blanket 
that you remember having with your kid, maybe it's got his initials on it or her initials on it or it was pink or it was blue, was it special to you? I believe it was. And it, because it reminded you that you was bringing home that child, right? You was bringing that child into your home and it was a remembrance of you. So what I want to show you today is in verse 17. Verse 17 um, allows us to see that very thing. If then you count me as a partner, receive him as you would me. Paul is saying to Philemon something so powerful here. And I, I don't want to go back and tell you the whole entire story because we've been in this for three weeks now. But, but Paul has led Onesimus to the Lord. He is a believer now. He has been saved just like I was saved and just like maybe you were saved. And he believes upon the Lord as his Savior. And he is a brother in Christ. But he is still a what? A slave. By the government laws, he, was still, he still belonged to Philemon. Do we like that? Absolutely not. But that's just how it worked at that time. So Paul was sending him back to Philemon and to tell Philemon to receive him how? Just as you would receive me. If you would make me a cookie when I came in, that's what I want you to do with Onesimus. If you would make me a hot tea or a cold iced tea, however you are planning on receiving me, that's exactly how I want you to receive Onesimus, this slave. And I, he goes on, he, he's astounding on what he said in verse um, 12. In verse 12 he said, He is to me as my own heart. He is to me as my own heart. I am sending him back to you, and with him comes my own heart. He is, he is allowing Philemon to understand that that is a part of me. That is part of me coming to you, and you treat him just like you would treat me. And he's allowing him to understand that Onesimus is now a brother in Christ. Onesimus is, is equal with Philemon, with Paul. They are part of God's holy family. And that is what we need to find out even in America today in 2020 is that what we need to do is to receive one another just in this manner. Remember how the Bible teaches us treat others how we would what? Like to be treated. We need to receive others just as we would be received of ourselves. And that's the desire of my heart today as we read this scripture is that we learn how to receive people. And the way that we learn how to receive people is we're going to see in scripture it's not easy. And I'm going to, I know right now that the, these, these young people that are bringing their children home, I want to be able to tell you, tell them, and I have told them, you know what, it's over. Life as you know it has ended. And, and you're saying, no, that's an exaggeration. Not for me. It, 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 when, when our first child was born, no one told me, you know what? Life is not going to be the same ever, ever again. I probably wouldn't have had a kid if someone had been honest with me and told me that. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I, hey, well, okay, I just don't do that. But I, you know what? It, it's not like it's... it's but you never sleep again. You, you never, even when they get older, you still stay up at night wondering if they're okay. I mean, it really does not change. Even when they get married, you still worry about them. It's not something that, that goes away anytime soon, at least in many of our cases. But what we see is, is that they're a part of our heart. And now we understand that today. And this is a beautiful reminder of what we're going to see in this book about what Jesus Christ has done for us as believers. Because of Jesus Christ, God receives us as he receives his son. Let me say that again. God receives us as he is just as if he was receiving his own son. Ephesians chapter um, 1 and verse 6 says this, To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. We are accepted in the Beloved. So we praise God for the glorious grace He has poured out on us who belong to His dear Son. 
We are received by God today not because of our merits, not because of our hard work, not because of our good lucks, but because we are in the beloved. We are in his son, Jesus Christ. If we were not being in him, we would not be received by God. If Paul was not writing this letter to Philemon and Onesimus just showed up, what do you think Philemon was going to do? You think he would have treated him like Paul? Would you think he would have treated him like a brother? No, he would have treated him like what? A slave, because that's what he was. But Paul was a friend. Paul was an intercessor. Paul was a partner who came in on the behalf of Philemon and behalf of Onesimus and helped out to allow, Paul, allow Philemon to see that he needs to receive this man just as he would receive the apostle Paul. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we would be made right with God through Christ. Just as we said before, if you have a child, it changes everything. And you, you love that child, and it, it's something special in your heart that you cannot even imagine. And Christ is saying this to us. We have only the possibility today to ever be in God's family is through Christ Jesus. No one comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. Without Christ, we certainly could not approach God on our own merit. Something we deserved. And that's hard for America to take. That's so hard for us to understand because we have done so much. We're so good. We're so talented. We're so pretty. We're so amazing. Uh, we feel like possibly that we're so good that we could walk up to God and say, look at me, look what I've done, look what I've accomplished. You have to be able to accept me, accept me as who I am because of what I've done. And we believe that we're, we've worked hard enough, we've been good enough, we've done this and we've done that. So we could walk up to God himself and say, look here at me and look what I've done. I deserve your blessing." I deserve your acceptance. I deserve it because of what I've done, how hard I've worked, how much I've done this and how much I didn't do that. Look at me. We believe in so many cases that we can stand and we can actually approach God on our own merit. But with God, with Christ, God will receive us because of his merit, not because of our own merit. We can approach God today. We can boldly go before the throne of grace today only because we've been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. We would not deserve to walk in front of God to boldly come before him if we were not yet covered by his blood. And I want you to see the picture. I know some of us live in one house or another house but when I was a kid, I lived in a very open house, and in my house today is the same way. Um, people walk in my house, don't even knock on the door. When I was a kid, the same way. My friends came over, family came over, they just walked in the house. They didn't even knock on the door. Why? They probably, if they knew if they knocked on the door, nobody would get up and open the door. I don't know. We, we were just so free to that, and the same way today. Um, you could just go. You could just freely go in. It was just a, an open place, and you, you felt uh, safe in that place. And I pray that the same way is today in my home. And you you feel that freedom to come in. Can you imagine a moment a slave entering into his master's house that way? No, there's no possibility of someone a slave just entering into the master's house and and going into the fridge and getting him something to drink. There, that's not a possibility. That's, he wouldn't just slot down on the couch and put his foot up on the ottoman and say, hey, what are you watching? That's, that's not what would happen. And you think, you, we understand that. But I want you to imagine something today. Imagine a guilty sinner as me entering God's house. How is that even possible? How, how would that even work? What possibility would that even, what, what would have to happen for that to happen? A guilty sinner such as I, just to be able to walk into God's house and, and sit down with him. The only possibility that we could be received into God's house, into God's kingdom, 
is through Jesus Christ. We are now part of the family because of what Christ has done for us. We've been received. And the first thing we have to realize is this. Um, without Christ, we could not approach God. And what we needed in our lives was a change. And I want to show you in verses 18 and 19 what it cost to go in to the, this fellowship. But if he has wronged you or owes you anything, put that on my account. I, Paul, am writing with my own hand. I will repay you, not to mention to you that you owe me even your own self besides. I love Paul's humor in that as well. We have to understand that to be able to walk in to God's family, to be able to enter into God's family, something has to happen. Something has to happen to where I am born again. I'm a new creature. I have to happen. And what we call this is forgiveness. A forgiveness of a debt and being made right. We see here, Paul did not suggest that Philemon ignore the slave's crime and forget about the debt. In our mind today, that's what Paul should have said. Paul should have said, you know what, Philemon, just forget about it. I don't care what he owes you. I don't care what he's done. You just wipe that debt clean, and it, it's, it's paid for, and, and you don't worry about it. You take the loss, Philemon. That would be normal for me and you to understand. But what Paul said was this. Put it on my account. Whatever he stole from you, Whatever you lost because of what happened, I want you to put it on my account. Do you remember the Good Samaritan? And how he, he took care of the man who had been beaten and fallen down. And, and he told the innkeeper, whatever bills come up, you pay for them yourself because you're the innkeeper. No. What did he say? Put it on my account. What, whatever he needs, you just take care of it, and, and I'll pay for it when I get back. I'll be there. And that Paul was assuring the debt would be paid. And we need to understand today, and I hope this does not scare people, but it takes more than love to solve the problem. It takes more than love to solve the problem. Love must pay a price. Love must pay a price. God does not save us by his love. And I know that scares a lot of people. But God does not scare us by, save us by his love. If that was true, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He loves the world, though the whole world is not what? Saved. So his love is not what is saving us. God saves us by his grace. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9. So it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone would, should boast. Grace is love that pays the price. And I know that we misunderstand this in America today. But this is what people believe is that Jesus loves me and I love Jesus and that's it. But you know what? That's not all it is. That Jesus loves me and he loved me so much that what he had to do was pay a price that I could not pay. And he died on the cross so that I could have life everlasting. That is what saved us today by believing upon Jesus Christ. God could not ignore the debt that I owed. He could not just push it off. He could not just forget about it. So he paid the debt for me. He, what did he do? He put it on his account. And one of the scariest things in the world is this. I know nobody enjoys seeing Christ on the cross. I don't. But when you see the Christ on the cross, what you see is your sins on him. And he paid on our behalf, a debt that we could not pay. He received, we are received today because of his forgiveness. And we are received today because he paid the price. He made it right. He reconciled us unto a holy God through what he's done for us on a cross. He paid 
it off. In, imputation is what we call this. When Jesus died on the cross, he was treated in the way that I should have been treated. He was treated in the way that I should have been treated. And when I trusted him as a Savior and Lord, his righteousness was put on my account. Now you know what I have? Righteousness. Not of my own, but comes from Jesus Christ. Now what happens? Christ accepts, God accepts me in Christ Jesus. Not because of who I am, but because of who Christ is. Jesus has said to the Father, He no longer owes you a debt because I paid it fully on the cross. Receive Him as you would receive me. We can hear Paul saying that to Philemon because we think Philemon is a, is a punk. He shouldn't have owned slaves in the first place. What was he thinking anyway? And, and we can look bad, that, bad on him and say, you know what Paul's saying? He's saying, you know what? You need to treat others just like you'd like to be treated. Philemon, suck it up, buddy. That, that's how we give him a hard time. And we're worried about him as well. But Christ is saying to us, to God the Father today, Receive him as you would receive me. We are an Onesimus. Because of what Christ has done for us, we can be received by God Almighty. But I want to share with you this morning is there is a difference between accepted in Christ and acceptable to Christ. All believers are accepted in Christ. But all believers must strive to be acceptable in the Lord in the, in the Lord in their daily life. Um, Joey Cecil's out of town this weekend, but I'll quote his favorite verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable in God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is as good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What we do, we are accepted in the Christ because of the blood that has covered us, because we have believed that God has raised him from the dead, and we've confessed with our, in, in our, with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. We have called upon the name of the Lord, so we are saved. But now we are accepted by God. But are our actions that we're living in right now acceptable to Christ? That's everyday sanctification. That's every day the Lord working with me. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. Suddenly the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and resting on him. And this is what he heard. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. We have the opportunity today not only to be accepted by Christ, but to be acceptable and pleasing unto him by bringing honor and glory to his holy name for all that he has done for us. Why? Because we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of this world. If you read in Matthew chapter 5, in verses 13 through 16, you can see that some salt loses its flavor, and some light gets put underneath a bushel and, and hidden. But what we need to be people of, be the salt of this world, to be the light of this world. The influence of salt is tasted. Everybody, every cook is different. But in my house, there are no salt shakers. Uh, my wife does not believe in salt shakers. If you sit down at my table and ask for a salt shaker, you're going to get a dirty look. Because in her un understanding is if you think it needs salt, you know what that means to her? You did, she didn't do it right. So she has cooked un incorrectly, and you are superior to her in the cooking world, and, and you think you know better, and you're, you need to put salt on it. You'll hear from it, too. You know what she'll say? It has exactly the amount of salt that it's supposed to have. Eat it and shut up. I don't know if she said it to you, but I've heard her say that in the past to other people. That's how it is because it, she knows that's what I salt. She don't want you to put too much salt. She don't want to put too little salt. You know what she wants to put? The exact salt that's supposed to be in there. 
And you know what happens today? If you eat food without salt, do you know it? How many of y'all been on a salt-free diet before? Let me tell you, Donna, you know it, don't you? It's awful. It, it don't taste right. It, it's not right. It is, it is something visible that you can see. The influence of salt is visible, is tasteable. It's something that you can experience, something that you can understand. And let me tell you, if there was no salt in this world, you could tell it. If there's no salt in your community, you can tell it. If there's no salt in your church, you can tell it. Because we are the salt, and we're supposed to be the salt of the earth. What makes this place taste better? And that's what America needs today. That's what this world needs today. They need a church to be the salt of this world. But not only the salt of this world, but we've been called to be the light. Because if you've not been there, if you know what it means to be in darkness, you would love to have someone coming along beside of you who's your friend, who's your intercessor, who's your partner that will bring light into your life. And we live in a dark world and so much more that we need light. And we need light absolutely everywhere. And God's asked us today to be the salt of this world, to be the light that brings because lack of light is visible. The lack of taste of salt is understandable. And what we need to do is do what God's called us to do because he's allowed us to step out of this community, to step out of our church and actually help somebody. And he wants us to receive one another. And how do you receive one another? Just like he has taught us today. You have to learn to forgive. You have to allow a reconciliation to be a priority in your life. Our heart has to be is that I want not to receive just people who look like me. I don't want to receive people who just like me. I don't want to receive people who just hang around me. But I want to receive who? I want to receive absolutely everyone just like Christ received me. And if we change that heart in our life, we don't have to worry about all these protesting. We don't have to worry about those things because what we're we doing, we're receiving everyone. And our lives will be changed completely. But how do you do that? Does it cost something? Oh, I love you. Well, great. You know, I don't know about you, but I hate watching these millionaires sit on TV saying, we're all in this together. <laughs> yeah, we are. You're sitting in your $30 million home in a big old jacuzzi watching 85-inch screen TV with your own personal cook. I don't think we're in this together, brother. I just, for some reason, I just don't think we are. But it's so much easier to say, you know what, I love everybody. But you know what, what Paul did? He was a partner, and his other partner was a loser. And what did he do? He was a friend and an intercessor. And he said this, even though you owe me everything, you know what? I'll pay what he'd cost you. I'll pay for it. Paul knew that reconciliation had a priority. And he knew that Christ paid a price. Christ just didn't say, I love you, and dropped it. But he loved us by dying on the cross for our sins. But God commendeth his love towards us while we were yet sinners. What happened? Christ died for us. He just didn't say he loved us, but through grace he saved us. And now today, what we can understand is that I want to receive one another. How am I going to do that? I have to learn to forgive who? Everyone. I have to have reconciliation as my number one priority in life. And God wants me to make a difference in the community that I am in. Look what God used Joseph to do in Egypt. Nobody ever even imagined someone could do what Joseph did in Egypt. But they'd never seen somebody with the salt of the earth and the light of this world upon him. And he blew up Egypt. God used um, Daniel to completely blow Babylon's mind. How they'd never seen someone being the salt of the earth. They'd never seen somebody being the light of the world. But God used them to change his, their community to change their place. And God wants us to be the ones who make a difference in this world. And how do we do that? By receiving all people, by forgiving all people, and making reconciliation a priority in each and every one of our daily lives. And that's how we receive. And what happens when you do that? What happens when you receive people? What happens when you forgive people? What happens when you make people right with God? You know what happens? Restoration. It, refreshing comes, look in verse 20, as it says this, Yes, brother, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. When we receive all people, 
When we forgive all people and when we make reconciliation a priority, we bring joy into someone's life. We bring refreshment into their life. We bring restoration into their life. We refresh the hearts of people. What we have today is this, is a decision to make. Paul not only showed us what it means to be a friend, not only showed us what it means to be an intercessor, not only showed us today to, what it means to be a partner, but what we see is this. Man, I have a lot of work to do. Because it, it would have been so normal for Paul to do what? Nothing. It would have been absolutely normal for Paul not to say a thing. He, he, he led Philemon to the Lord and he got saved. Leave him in Colossae alone. He, he's now in, in Rome in prison and God miraculously through his providence has shown and allowed um, Onesimus to show up in his own jail cell. And, and he led Onesimus to the Lord. Just let him stay in Rome. Just forget about it, Paul. Why are you sticking your nose into everything? Just, just let, it, let it go. Just let it flow. Don't worry about it, Paul. Don't, don't worry about why God was doing things or how God was doing things. Just mind your own business. He, he could have just left it alone. He could have ignored it. But you know what Paul wanted to do? To do the will of the Lord was his meat. That was his desire. And Paul knew that God was doing something amazing. And when he saved Philemon, and when now he saved Onesimus, Paul was like, man, God's doing something here. God, God is doing something more than I can imagine. I, I can't even see what God's doing here. I can't even imagine what he's doing here. But man, I can see his hand working. And I've got to let God do that which God wants to do. So he tells, tells Onesimus, you know what? You're saved, brother, and I, you're in my family. But you know what you're going to have to do now? You're going to have to go back to Colossae. And, Finley, and Onesimus is like, go back where? Why? Well, God wants you to. Onesimus is just a, a young Christian. He's like, really? Would God want me to go back to some place where I was unhappy? Would God want me to go back to some place that was dangerous? If Onesimus was born into the American church, he wouldn't want anywhere close to Colossae ever again. I, what do you mean go back there? I, I don't want to go back there. That's crazy. I'm going to go the other direction. You ever thought about Spain? That's farther away from Colossae than you can get. I, I'll go in the other direction of that. But you know, Paul knew God was doing something. Because Paul knew what God was doing something, Onesimus said, you know what? God must be doing something. And when Philemon read this letter, Philemon said, God must be doing something. And you know what God was doing? Restoration. If Paul would have met, kept his mouth shut, there would have never been restoration in Colossae. And I don't know the numbers, and you don't either, but one day maybe in heaven we'll know. But when Philemon accepted Onesimus just as he would accept Paul, revival broke out in Colossae. Later on, we know that, that Philemon became the whole pastor of that whole entire Eastern Asia Turkish as we know it, Asia Minor as we know it today. And God used him in a mighty way. And thousands and thousands and maybe even more than that 
come to a saving knowledge of God because Paul was a friend, an intercessor, and a partner with Philemon. And he allowed him to be restored to Onesimus. God wants people to see how he restores one another, how he changes people. And because of that testimony that happened at that time, thousands of people have come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We don't know a number. And maybe after I'm in heaven 10,000 years or 12,000 years, I might walk up to Paul and say, Paul, how many people do you think got saved in Colossae because of what you did? And you know what Paul would say? One plants and one waters, but God gives the increase. We don't know why God is asking us to do what he's asking us to do. I want to quote Mike Tyson for the first time in my life. He's, Mike Tyson said this, everything goes well until you get punched in the mouth. But when you get punched in the mouth, every, the plans change. Goals change. Everything changes after you get hit in the mouth. You know what we've had as a church in the last few months? We got punched in the mouth. We're staggering back. We, we really don't know um, the effects of the punch yet. We can't figure out what's happened because it's never happened to us before. And, and we've known, we don't see exactly what's happening. But what we need to understand is this. God is in control. And what he wants done more than anything in this world is for us to understand that we have to get to a place in our life that we understand the need to receive one another. Not just some people, but everybody. Philemon could have said, Paul, I'll receive everybody, but I'm not going to receive the guy who stole from me because he took from me. There ain't no way I'm going to take him back. You keep him. You say, well, what kind of man would have you been? He would have been a lot like me. How many of you all like someone to steal from you? That's the worst feeling you could ever have. Paul's saying, you know what? We need to become people who receive one another. And Paul didn't just stop right there, but Paul said, whatever he owes you, put it on my account. I wonder where Paul got that from. He got that from Jesus. Because God... He told God himself, he said, whatever Chuck owes, you put it on my account. And you receive him just as you would receive me. God wants us to become just like his son, Jesus Christ. That people who receive one another, forgive one another, pay a price by making peace and reconciling one another which he knows brings restoration to us all. Because you know what I need today more than anything in this world is refreshment. Don't you? Uh, most people think a refreshment is a cold Coke on a, on a hot day. But refreshment is having a partner in Christ. Refreshment is having an intercessor, intercessor in Christ, is having a friend in Christ. Refreshment is God's house, God's people, helping one another. This morning, if you've never came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you're never going to feel refreshment outside of Christ Jesus. Because what he did was he forgave you. He paid a price that nobody could ever pay, and he put our sins on his account. He made us right with God. And today, he's restored us. And we have righteousness because of who Jesus Christ is. So what we get to do today is say, say this. I can walk boldly into the throne room of grace and give him my petitions, not because of who I am, but because of what Jesus Christ has done for me.
And I can hear Jesus saying right now, receive Chuck just like you would receive me. And I'm so thankful. Just as I remember bringing my boys home in that receiving blanket with their little initials on it or whatever, I can't remember. One, I think they were blue. I can, cannot wait to that moment, just as Mike read in John chapter 14, is when Christ receives us into his re our reward. Not on our behalf, not because of us, but because of what he did for us. May we become a people who loves to restore one another. Let's pray. Lord God, I'd ask that you would do a mighty work in our hearts this morning, knowing that Lord, that we need help receiving one another. Knowing our nation is standing in need of learning how to receive one another. But can we take a moment this morning and look how you've received us? Not because of our skin problems. Not because of if we were black, white, red, green, or whatever color. But he received us because of his son Jesus Christ because of his blood that was poured out on the cross of Calvary and covered every one of our sins we've been received because of Christ so Lord make us people who receive one another thanking you for allowing us to see you today change our hearts Lord Jesus in your precious name we do pray amen it's our invitation to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's stand together and turn to him 491. of my bondage sorrow and night Jesus I come Jesus I come into thy freedom gladness and light Jesus I come to thee out of my Arrogant pride, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come into thy blessed will to abide, Jesus, I come to thee out of myself to dwell in thy love out of despair into raptures above upward foray on wings 
like a dove. Jesus, I come to Thee. Amen. We say thank you for um, being with us this morning. And I pray that what we understand is what God's doing is something amazing in us. And um, at the beginning of all this uh, um, COVID-19 things, we said that, man, I pray that when we come through this, we'll come through this closer to God than we've ever been, on fire, more fire than we've ever had. And that's still my prayer. That's still my prayer that, that God will still give us that opportunity, that, that blessing to come in, to come back as we're on fire for, for the Lord. But it, it's scary, um, just like we said. You, it's, you get punched in your mouth, you don't know if, what it's going to take. I'm really worried about some people may never come back to church again. They've been six months, eight months, nine months. You know, maybe they won't, we won't ever see them again. Um, but you know what it's going to take? It's going to take a friend. It's going to take an intercessor. It, it, it's going to take a partner. And the next week we're going to talk about it's going to take someone that's going to hold somebody accountable. Um, hold their feet to the fire and say, you know what, this is, this is what God wants us to do and may we do it for his glory. So pray for us. We'll pray for you. Um, we ask a couple of ushers, if you would, um, to go to each one of these exits. Um, most of our ushers are, are out of town here this morning, but if a couple of you could help us out, we'd appreciate it. And if you'd like to give to the Lord, you're more than welcome to do that on these exits out through here. And um, so thankful that God has, has taken care of us so faithfully over this last few months, and we want to bring honor and glory to his holy name. And, um, and I know that we can't shake anybody's hands. You can maybe wave at somebody, fake hug or something like that. I don't know what you can do. But we're looking forward to one day that we don't have to do that. But until then, we praise the Lord that we're here in God's house and not having this opportunity. And um, you all got a song you can dismiss this in? Sure. All right. Let's sing a little chorus found on him, uh, page 426. Blessed be the tie that binds as we stand together and are dismissed. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord with you today. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above.